next going to look at uh, how to examine the extrapyramidal system. And the best way, as always, is to look at how, what you're looking for in a normal person before we go on and examine a patient, for example, with Parkinson's. Um, the problem, uh, the cardinal features, as we've discussed before, uh, of Parkinson's are bradykinesia, tremor, rigidity, and postural instability. So we have to see how we examine someone normally and say these things are not present. So, Peter, thank you very much for coming. You're welcome. I appreciate, uh, as always, uh, your uh, help. So I'm going to ask you to walk away, now this time very slowly, if you don't mind, to the pillar. Turn slowly, if you will. You don't need to over-exaggerate. And halfway back, I'd ask you to stop. And I will talk over what's going to, what I'm looking for. OK, if you don't mind. So I'm looking primarily for how he starts off. Is he bradykinetic or slow to start? I'm looking for the swing of his arms. Often, uh, someone with Parkinson's doesn't swing one arm or the other. When they turn, they turn slowly, called statue turning. And when they're coming back, I'm looking for a flexed posture and a festinating gait, where the gait is kind of chasing itself. Festino is to hurry. So when he stops, as we've asked, we go the, to the usual routine and say, now can you walk heel to toe, please? Stand beside the patient, because they can have postural instability. But this should be OK if you're reassuring enough. That's fine. Lovely. I ask them to do Romberg sign, as usual. Posterior columns, vestibular, and um, vision, not relevant to extrapyramidal, but always go through the motions. Hold the patient's hands, if they don't mind. Ask them to stand on their toes, should not be a problem. Down again, onto your heels. No evidence of foot drop, should not be present. So all of these things should not be present, other than how you view the patient with their flexed posture, their turns, their shuffling gait, and uh, their bradykinesia. What might be present, what is slightly different in extrapyramidal syndromes is the postural reflexes, or the writing, or I-G-H-T-I-N-G, reflexes. So if I could ask you to stand with your feet reasonably far apart. Now, you must communicate. I know I go on about it, but you must communicate because the patients will cooperate if you do so. I'm going to gently pull you towards me, OK? okay. Don't fall over. Now, I always give a warning shot. That's what I'm going to do. Don't fall on top of me. Now I'm going to do a more exaggerated one. And it's a good tug like that, OK? And he doesn't fall over, so no problem. Then you step behind the patient and say, now I'm going to pull you back towards me, gently, and now heavily. And a Parkinsonian patient will tend to go back like this. OK. The next thing when examining someone with Parkinson's or extrapyramidal disorders, I should be more specific, is you take an overview as before. Start from head to toe. You look at the patient. Now, Peter, obviously, is, is just demonstrating for us today. But you look at the patient, and they tend to have what's called hypomemia, or mask-like faces. Fa faces. That's a, an expressionless face. They don't look particularly happy, even though they may well be very happy. You look at their skin, and it tends to be kind of a mixture of greasy and dry. It's called seborrheic dermatitis. And they tend not to be able to, it's not a question of feeling, but they produce a bit too much saliva, and they can have a little bit of salivation around their mouths. So these are the things you look for. And you should be able to diagnose this if it's florid by the time the patient comes into the waiting room. You see someone coming in with a flexed posture, a tremor, uh, a hypomemic or expressionist face. And when they talk, and this is crucial, their voice is hypophonic and, or dysphonic. And that simply means hoarseness. Uh, so the pitch of the voice is a little lower. It's not dysphasia. It's not dysarthria. It's not dystonia. It's dysphonia. So difficulty with um, the pitch of the voice. And you, this can be retrained. The next thing I look for then is the tremor. So I ask you to put your hands down by your side. And when you're talking to someone, you're chatting away. But if you're going to learn neurology properly, the whole thing is observation. The tremor one gets in Parkinson's isn't one on intention, but it's, it's a resting tremor. And it's as if you're holding a pill between your forefinger and your thumb. It's rhythmical, and it goes at a frequency of 4 to 6 hertz per second. So literally, it's a rhythmical tremor, which is present at rest. And if you see it present at rest, you can again subtly examine the patient by saying, can you just lift up your hand there? So the tremor will go like this, and you lift up your hand and momentarily be gone. It will be gone. And then after a few seconds, it'll come back here. So it's only in the resting position that it tends to occur. We then move on to examine tone. You follow the same routine, if you don't mind. You bend at the elbow, you bend at the wrist, and then you turn. But for extrapyramidal conditions, you really are looking at, for increased tone at the elbow, like this. And don't rush and don't hurt the patient. And this is called, if it's increased, it's called lead pipe rigidity. And I'll exaggerate it here. It should look like this, as if you're trying to open a lead pipe, or um, bend a lead pipe, I should say. And then the other one is then you take your hand. And remember, your examiners are looking at you. And you put on the patient's wrist. And again, it's literally flexion extension. 
And what I'm looking for here is cogwheel rigidity. And this will look like this, or feel like this, like, the cogs, uh, like a, something moving on a cogwheel. And you can exaggerate these a fraction, that you can take your left hand, and I want you to tap it slowly on your left uh, thigh. So this can bring out lead pipe rigidity, and it can bring out, or make more manifest, uh, cogwheel rigidity. Now, in the UK, that's known as the Kinnear Wilson maneuver, named after um, the gentleman who, the neurologist who described Wilson's disease. In Europe, though, it's known as Froment's sign, F R O M E N T S. So, a bit of variation. We can just call it uh, distraction if you want to be a bit more simplistic. Now, thank you. So, once you've looked at gait, tremor, rigidity, you must look for bradykinesia. Brady is slow, kinesia is movement, so paucity or slowness of movement. So, I usually do it this way. If you Put your hands out in front of you, and with your right hand, just mimic me. And open, and close. And then you go as quickly as you can. And we'll get a little bit faster. Now there's two things here. One is, if it's slow, slower than me, you say, oh, I wonder if this is bradykinesia. But you also subtly again look at the left hand, Peter's left hand in this instance, for sometimes mimicry or synkinesia. So he'll be doing this, and the other hand will be kind of mimicking it uh, at the same time. So we look for all these subtle signs as well as the more um, manifest ones. Another way of doing it is if you could hold your hand up like that and pretend you're changing one of the older light bulbs and make a full turn like that. Because this bradykinetic movements uh, can be obvious. And then the other side, and you don't do them simultaneously, you do them separately. And in the legs, sometimes tremor can start in the legs and rigidity in the leg and you think, oh, is it a stroke? But actually, what happens in Parkinson's, um, you get this extinction of movement. So people can start off doing a movement like this, for example, and then it gets smaller and smaller. More easily done with the feet, if you like. And I just ask people to tap out as if they're listening to a song. So I want you to tap your foot loudly on the floor. And I literally just close my eyes and listen and make the same noise, OK? So I'm going to close my eyes and listen okay. while you tap hard. Perfect. And with someone with a Parkinson's syndrome, it'll tend to go like and extinguish gradually over time. Um, the other features uh, of Parkinson's that you'd look for are Parkinson's plus syndrome. So if you say, it looks like Parkinson's, rigidity, tremor, bradykinesia, and postural instability, but there are a few features that aren't quite specific, quite, um, aren't quite right, I should say, or quite typical. For example, the signs are bilateral from the start, the tremor is bilateral, or the rigidity is more central. Then you think of, just briefly think of things like multi-system atrophy, and uh, that's associated with orthostatic hypotension, so you do lying and standing blood pressure. You think of Lewy body dementia, uh, in which case you ask the patient about visual hallucinations. Or, more simply, you ask a patient uh, about progressive supranuclear palsy, uh, or PSP, and to do that you look at vertical gaze. So you say, look at my finger here, and you look down. I'm going to hold your eyelids, if you don't mind. And if someone can look right down like that, they have no problem with vertical gaze. A lot of people over a certain age have a problem looking up. Most people don't have a problem looking down, and a problem with vertical gaze, particularly downwards, might, in the setting of an extrapyramidal um, disorder, might suggest PSP or progressive supranuclear palsy.